Before I begin Chapter 15, it's finally time to promote Marissa into a Swordsmaster. The Swordsmaster promotional gains are generous, giving her a much needed 2 Strength, 2 Defense, and 2 Constitution. On top of that, she also gains an innate plus 15% chance to crit. This is going to make Marissa far better than she has been previously. Chapter 15 is one of my favorite chapters in the game. I'm going to have to fight off a large number of reinforcements from the top, left, and bottom left while pushing towards the bottom left corner in order to save Ephraim. This chapter is a fairly large difficulty spike compared to the last few chapters, so it's going to be all hands on deck to deal with the enemies. I've decided to withhold Yuan's promotion. He's only level 12 and he's currently capable of one-rounding many enemies on his own. I'm thinking it might be a good idea to invest in his future and get a few more levels and try and squeeze out higher offensive stats. I'm pushing my entire army to the left at the beginning of the chapter. That's because many of the reinforcements will be spawning from the upper right corner and I want to stabilize the situation so I won't be attacked from two sides. Additionally, once Ephraim spawns in at the bottom left, this area is where I will be sending him to retreat to. Since I'm not allowed to use Ephraim for this challenge, I need to send him to an area devoid of enemies to keep him out of combat, which is a challenge on this map giving me a high number of enemy cavalry and flyers. I'm planning on sending Ross, Amelia, and Gilliam to the lower side of the map because they all have high survivability and the lower enemies are mostly physical units. While Ross doesn't have that much defense, his high speed and luck is in very high avoid against the enemy lance units of which there are many. Now that Ephraim has arrived, I want to talk about the two units he's brought with him and whether we're allowed to use them for this challenge. Opinions on Null range from placing him anywhere from mid-tier to bottom-tier. His combat is, quite frankly, terrible. He isn't fast, dies if you so much as scratch him, and his zero luck means that every single engagement carries a risk of Null eating a critical hit and exploding into a fine particulate mist. However, Noel is actually very usable despite his flaws purely for his utility since he's a high enough level to instantly promote into a summoner. Summoners can generate phantoms to serve as disposable bait, luring out enemy units and serving as lightning rods for enemy siege weaponry, as their low hit points makes them the top priority on the enemy's targeting AI. That's more or less all Noel is capable of besides healing, but he isn't very good at it since summoners have an E rank in stabs and he'll be too busy spending his turns on summoning. Due to Null's inability to participate in combat or use stabs very well, we'll consider him enough of a low tier to add to our army. Dussel's evaluation as a unit changes drastically whether you play on Erika or Ephraim's route. On Erika's route, we're recruiting him a full 5 chapters later, so he's considered to be much worse than on Ephraim's route. However, his base stats and excellent weapon ranks make him a nice filler unit despite his low speed, allowing him to take hits decently while striking back hard with silver weapons. He's too useful to use for this run considering that he requires absolutely zero investment to make a contribution. Besides, if I want a decent combat unit, it's more fun to earn it for training. Ephraim has made his grand return. You may remember that I decided I wouldn't be using Ephraim back in Chapter 5X on account of his base stats, growth rates, large promotional gains, and powerful personal weapons. The game will force me to deploy him on occasion, but we'll just ignore him in that case. Something to explain about this chapter is the concept of hidden desert treasure. There are 9 hidden items to find in this chapter in certain unmarked regions of the map. Any unit that ends their turn in one of these regions has a luck percent chance to pick up the item. However, Rennick as a rogue has a 100% chance to pick up these items. I would have sent Rennick to the right side of the map to grab some items right off the gate, but as you can tell, the swarms of Pegasi have begun spawning. Additionally, shamans will begin spawning from the top left and the top right in a couple turns as well. These reinforcements are going to serve as valuable training for Yuan and even Erika. Erika can promote after Chapter 16, so I may as well try to get her to double digit strength before that time. Since I have zero interest in training Noel up like Yuan for combat, I immediately promote him into a summoner using the Master Seal I picked up from the village. While I'd like to fight the boss, he's so fast that none of my units can double him and my hit rates are particularly low. Once the situation is stable, I'll use support bonuses to increase my hit rate and try and take him out quickly. Enemies from the bottom right have begun moving, which is why it was essential that I come to Ephraim's rescue promptly. Noel isn't very good for combat and couldn't fight them all reliably. Additionally, a large wave of enemies will be spawning in from the bottom left on turn 8. My method for dealing with the Pegasus Knight reinforcements isn't particularly elegant because I'm trying to maximize the experience I can give to Yuan. While I have some downtime, I'd like to describe what all of the hidden desert treasure I can find in this chapter is. I'm going to get a Warp Staff and a Silent Staff. The Warp Staff is going to be essential to my strategy for Chapter 19. 
In terms of weapons, I can find a Worm Slayer and a Dragon Axe, which are effective against Wyverns and Dragons alike, in addition to a Killer Bow, of which I already have several. There's also an Eclipse Tome, which is a Dark Tome with 10 range, but quite frankly, it's terrible. It has a hit rate of like, 30. What the hell am I supposed to do with that? In terms of usable items, there's a Body Ring, which gives plus 2 constitution, a Silver Card that grants a discount in shops, a Swift Soul which grants plus 2 to movement, and the Metis Tome which grants a small increase to the character's growth rates. I'd like to highlight what Summoner Utility is useful for. I've been using Null to create phantoms to bait the Pegasus Knights deep into my formation, making it easier to pick up kills with the units of my choice for training. I'm expecting Null to really shine starting next chapter when I can use phantoms as lightning rods for the enemy's 10 range siege magic, allowing me to advance with impunity. Using a phantom has given me the opportunity to give Erika a kill and gain another level. Somehow she now has more defense and strength. What's going on here? If I were able to promote Erika at this moment, she would actually have a surprisingly workable 13 defense. She might not be as fragile in the late game as I'm used to. I've taken a good foothold in the southern front of the map by now. If Ross, Amelia, or Gilliam end up needing any healing, well, that's what I've got the forts for. I'm just in time as well, as it's now turn 8 and the big wave from the left is now arriving. I've also got shaman spawning in from the top by this point. I won't be dealing with reinforcements for very much longer. Once I've taken care of the existing waves, I'll be finally ready to take on the lower right corner of the map. With the Pegasi gone, I finally start fighting the boss. I actually can double him just fine, I just made the mistake of checking with heavier weapons earlier. However, he's fairly powerful and completely immune to critical hits, so I send Nime with the support bonuses and the silver bow to do some real damage. The real danger down south is easily the enemy mages, who I immediately take out first. Gilliam and Amelia have high defense stats, so I'm not worried about the rest of the enemies, and Ross in the fort has an extremely high avoid stat. We've dealt with most of the threat in this chapter, and it's going to just be a slow trickle feed of taking out units one by one for the remainder. There's still a high number of kills I can feed to Ewan, and there's still a lot of desert treasure I need to pick up as well. Killing the boss drops the Hoplin Guard, which negates all critical hits. We'll be giving this to Null because Null has zero luck. While I've technically gotten a lot of mileage out of Amelia this chapter, she's far too weak to kill the enemies in one round. She hasn't really managed anything that Gilliam can't do on his own by this point. Speaking of trainees, I've been putting a lot of effort into Ewan, but he hasn't gained a single point of magic this chapter. He has a 45% magic growth, so I was hoping to get a little bit luckier considering that his promotion isn't going to give him any magic. On the plus side, he's going to be extremely fast, exceeding 20 speeds as a summoner. We'll also be able to passively level him outside of combat by summoning phantoms for 10 experience a pop. So there's still time for him to gain a few more points of magic, however, he is a candidate for the energy ring. I'm not dealing magic damage with anyone besides Natasha, who Yuen already has better stats than. I used the enemy shamans to train Natasha's light magic rank a bit. She still hasn't reached C rank, so she can't use a divine tome yet. While it's very heavy, I want to use it against monsters in later chapters. This enemy berserker is incredibly dangerous, but very inaccurate. He has zero shot at hitting Colm when he's on the forest. Because I had the berserker take out his hand axe to attack a phantom, he drops his dragon axe in return. There's not much left for me to show by this point, so I'll give you the highlights. Renick obtains a silver card. Ewan gains another level, but doesn't really gain any of the stats I want him to gain. Amelia continues to gain absolutely nothing. I position the Phantom to bait out a Weapon Rider and accidentally pick up the Swift Soul. I have no way of retrieving this item. It's lost forever. Rennick picks up the Metis Tome. Nime gains a point of strength. I have Rennick steal an extra Guiding Ring I don't really need. Ewan's level ups continue to disappoint me this chapter. While Ross one-shots Falter using the Dragon Axe, ending the chapter. Thank you for watching.